Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to be taking a look at one of the recent changes that has come to command. Uh, by the way, if you're curious, we're in uh, 106 build 1328.11, rounded to the nearest decimal point. But the big change that has happened recently has to do with aircraft acceleration. Now this is one of those things where, you know, if you know, I'm kind of following, I call it the drama of the missile people versus their overpowered versus their underpowered. It's interesting because um, since missiles have been changed in the fact that they take time to accelerate and everything, you have shifted the balance away from the missile people in towards the aircraft people because all they have to do is turn around and run. But uh, one of the interesting changes that actually came out was that actually modifying the acceleration curve of aircraft to more closely show what actual aircraft accelerate at. Now, for those of you who are flight simmer fans, uh, you're already familiar with this. You get in your F-16, you climb up to 36,000 feet, and you take your throttle and you push it all the way to the stop. And then you wait, and you wait, and you wait, because the aircraft um, actually takes a very, very, very long time to get up to speed, especially if it has drag. Speaking of drag, we have all sorts of fun little objects on the side of my aircraft here. We're mounting a couple harms, we've got a GBU-38. We're pretty much ready to go against this lovely little SA-5 here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do what we do in DCS, afterburner. So what you'll observe is um, we're picking up speed pretty quick here. We're going Mach 1, we're going up through Mach 2, or we're up to a Mach 1.2. We're uh, picking up some speed here. We're doing about 700. Remember, that's a true airspeed that is not indicated. Uh, speeds like this make me twitch, by the way, when I see numbers that high. And we're starting to... We're, uh, <laughs> we're, we're going. I'm, uh, 1 1.4, 1.1. All right, so we're, we're going. We're going. Don't worry. It's, it's happening. You, you've, you've just got to let it happen. It, it's going to happen at its own speed here. And... Um, I'm not going to say we're, we're kind of tapping out here, but I am going to say that I'm now up to 5x speed, and you're observing that we're out pushing a 1.51 here. The top speed of our F-16, by the way, if you have nothing on it, is about Mach 1.8. Now, one of the things we're probably going to see in a future build, I'm not going to call it, but if I had to guess, it's probably going to happen, is you're going to actually see where drag will prevent you from even getting over Mach 1. That's probably going to be the next thing. So people have internal stores like an F-22 now have themselves a new advantage, so to speak, because they're able to go those speeds, whereas an F-16, with everything dangling off the wings right now, is absolutely struggling here. We're getting up to about 1.57. If you're following the time, that was about four and a half minutes. Now, I've actually recreated this experiment over in DCS, and I discovered that it wasn't four and a half minutes. It was closer to 11. So it's actually very interesting to uh, see how that kind of curve is changing with time. Also in DCS, you would never get up to the speed in the first place. You just, you couldn't It'd just be too much drag. And of course, uh, one of the things I was reading recently is um, in the older aircraft, certain fuses didn't like going this fast. Bad things happened to the aircraft. Now, if you probably observe, I'm going to go ahead and pop him down to loiter. Notice he basically gets thrown out the canopy of his uh, little airplane here as we decelerate because, of course, we're going to drop down to this speed to 350. Now, where this gets really, really interesting is if we want to attempt to zoom climb him right now. By the way, my SA-5 is more than confident of my current position. He's just probably thinking about whether or not he wants to take a pot shot at me. Oh, let's make sure we didn't do the nuclear one. I've always made that mistake before. Is this the nuclear one? Because it's going to be pretty embarrassing if it's the nuke. You always got to watch out for these things. Oh, let's see here. Uh, no, no, no. This is the big one. 217 kilogram. It's a big warhead. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to order him down to minimum altitude. And the reason I'm doing this is I'm basically going to demonstrate how we can also take a look at our impact on climbing performance. Now, as you probably know in the past, um, it's actually all aircraft excess energy. If you have any sort of angle of attack, is basically going to translate it into altitude. Now, the reason that gets fun is because whenever you try to get an airplane up to altitude, uh, generally what you have to do is you have to build up a tremendous amount of energy and then basically punch through so that you're not creating extra drag by having increasing excess of angle of attack. Basically, you're using speed to get you up to altitude versus using angle, which, you know, that creates drag and you have induced problems, and it's all very, very messy. So we're sitting down here at low altitude, and I'm going to go ahead and order him to stomp. Oh, whoop, whoop, whoop. <laughs> Wrong button. I'm going to go ahead and uh, order him to go ahead and climb up to his max altitude here. Now, in the real world, of course, if I ordered him up to a maximum altitude, it would be a bit of a, take some time, it, especially at Mach 0.53. What would happen is that once you start climbing properly and you get up to about 27, 28,000, your plane, your nose would be like, 12, 13 degrees angle of attack, and the plane, you'd be a full afterburner, and the thing is just tanking. It would just ugh, barely be able to climb here. So, of course, if we kicked on full afterburner, uh, we'd be able to take advantage of that extra speed because we'd have reduced, uh, reduced, induced drag. Got it. And, of course, that would mean that we could go ahead and climb better. And it's just kind of like the nature of the beast, especially with the swept back wings. And we got a missile on the way. I knew that was coming any second here. So normally what we do, of course, is um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, let him evade here. So what we do, of course, is we turn around as fast as we can. Uh, we go ahead and jam on it, afterburner, and get the heck out of here. 
Now, what you'll see here is uh, my F-16 is uh, doing two things at once, which is uh, usually not recommended. He's gaining altitude, and at the same time, as he's trying to put on some speed here. Now, for those of you who know the SA-5, this is S-200. I forget which missile this is. This is a 5-victor. Yep, this is a 20. This is a big one. Um, so normally what would happen, of course, is uh, we just burn and say, goodbye, you're an SA-5. You can't touch me. I'm just going to go full afterburner and get the heck out of here. But what you're probably observing here is um, our F-16 no longer has the ability to just burn out the missile. As a matter of fact, you can see my range ring is starting to shrink drastically as those big missiles are actually catching up. Did you ever think this would happen? But believe it or not, my lovely little F-16 here, the only reason he survived is probably because, uh, yeah, we ran him out of energy. Now, let's see here. Our range for running out of energy was 130 miles. So my F-16 had to travel almost 80 miles in order to get clear of that weapon. And notice my current speed right now is um, not particularly great. It's actually a Mach 1.6, which isn't super duper. So we're going to go ahead and uh, turn my guy around here, and now we're going to send him back this way. He's now at 45,000 feet. Now, if I were to go ahead and take this plane, we're actually going to edit him real quick. We're going to give him some gas, just because I'm being sort of generous, as they like to say. Oh, uh, let's see here. Nine, 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 nine. Boop. Okay, we're full tanks. Ka-ching. All right, we're ready to go again. So, of course, um, when we're in this situation, this is optimum for a harm launch. And if you probably wondered why I brought the harm with me, it's to give you an idea of the new problem we now face. So I'm going to press Shift F1 here. Actually, first of all, I'm going to click on this. Shift up one now. Let's go ahead and I'll click on that one here. And um, we have one of these. And I'm going to go ahead and do this because uh, why not? So we're going to continue cruising. We're going to cruise. Uh, look, that big bird D is just watching me. We're at a new altitude kind of a thing. Those of you who uh, know our DCS folks or your flight sim folks, you know, of course, uh, to get a really, really long range harm shot, you have to get a ton of altitude. You can actually zoom climb. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kick on the afterburner here. And you can see he starts to go ripping. At these altitudes, by the way, at 45,000 feet, this F-16 would be hanking it would be like oh that's a technical term for not being able to accelerate because it just it couldn't it just would not be able to but you're noticing again it's taking us forever to get up to speed here now my sa5 is going to fire and there it is so we have a new problem now um we need to get this harm off we don't have time so we're going to go ahead and uh, get a little bit closer so we can desperately get that harm off and then we're going to turn around and run there we go 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 get out of here get out of here get out of here Go, 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 go. And again, I'm manually overriding all this stuff here. So there it goes. So um, our harm is off. And again, remember, the harm has got a pretty good range here. You know, it's going to have to climb up really, 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 really high and then kind of basically make its way back down. So F-16, now uh, he's going to be smart here. Uh, he's going to put a little bit of altitude on him. Obviously, we can do a high-speed break and everything like that. But we don't want to go too low here because then we're going to lose our speed advantage. And we're basically going to try to outrun the missile. Uh, we know it's back there. And as a matter of fact, we can do a God's eye view here. And you can see it chasing us down. Now, if we were smart, of course, uh, we'd lose a little bit of altitude and try to get around the curvature of the Earth. And I'll go ahead and do that now. Go ahead, F-16. Go down, 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 down. Nope, don't climb. Don't climb. Minimum altitude, my guy. Minimum altitude. Don't climb. You have to get under. You have to get into the thick part of the atmosphere. And you can see our missiles are coming at us real quick here. Our F-16 is looking... He's, he's feeling pretty confident now. Now he's more than uh, low enough that we can now beam the missile. So go ahead and uh, stay nice and low. It's about 50 feet off the ground. Those missiles are gone. Nice try, missiles. Not good enough. Not good enough. And of course, you can see that my arm got shot down. <laughs> and again, that's uh, just sort of to give you an idea of how tricky that has suddenly become. So what I'm going to do now, and again, you can see that acceleration, so I'm going to grab this guy. Now, if you recall, this one has no drag. This is actually in the ferry configuration. I'm actually going to press the jettison button here. Yeah, that's what that button does. And I'm going to dump everything off my plane. And I'm going to up to afterburner here, and uh, we're absolutely going to stomp on it. Now, notice uh, we pick up speed pretty quick. We have very little drag. Um, again, there's no fuel tanks hanging off me. But again, as before, we get about that 1.5, 1.2, and we just slow down to nothing. Now, the reason this is so handy here is because I built up all the extra speed and we're kind of cooking along here, is when we go to go ahead and I'll lose some altitude when he takes a shot at us, the problem's not going to get any better. As a matter of fact, um, let's see here. Do we have automatic evasion on? We do. So let's see if our F-16 buddy is uh, going to see these missiles and maneuver properly. What I'm hoping to do is go for a gunshot here, but I don't. There it is. Oh, boy, there it is. Oh boy, he's maneuvering. Notice, look at how much speed he lost. He lost half of his speed in that turn. Stay with it, my guy. Oh, oh! Oh, here comes two more. Of course, I mean, why the SA-5 crew is like, do you have any idea how expensive these darn things are? Uh, what do we do, by the way? We use the ANALE. Oh yeah, that makes sense, of course. So we're going to get a little bit closer here. Uh -huh, here comes another more. Here they come, here they come. These are really fun to watch, by the way. Whoa, you're doing fine. Keep going, F-16, you're doing it. You're doing it, you're doing it. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. I'll maneuver those missiles. Oh, yeah, there it is. Get inside of his minimum range. All right, we're actually going to get a gun run. I'm actually pretty excited. Nice. 
All right, we're going to press shift F1 there, and uh, we're going to get him with a good old-fashioned gun run. And we're going to go ahead and shut this off, because uh, he's going to have to lose a heck of a lot of altitude to pull that off. Ooh, here comes another one. <laughs> I bet those guys in the SA-5 right now are like, are you... Oh! Oh, what a waste. What a waste. And you can see that one coming in here, too. So as you can see, those new acceleration mechanics create some interesting little tactical concerns. I have the honest to God feeling that the next thing that's gonna probably happen is the thrust is gonna change because realistically, these aircraft do not have the ability to produce that much thrust at those altitudes. Yes, they can accelerate like that at low altitudes, but once that air gets really, really thin, these things are like flying around with like cruise ships on thin ice kind of a thing like that. Not thin ice, it would be black ice. I think that'd be a better expression for it. So you're probably sitting here going, so how do we take advantage of this information tactically here? Um, obviously, we have aircraft that it's going to be burning our fuel much higher if we're using an um, afterburner. The other problem we're, of course, going to be having uh, with something like this is this means our classic technique of uh, trying to just turn around and run is not going to be as effective. As a matter of fact, watch this. What we've done is we've secretly replaced the Folgers. Chris is a regular coffee with Folgers. No, we haven't. Uh, what we did do, though, is we did put a SA-8 and we buried it into a tree. So um, the new problem now, of course, is, like I said, traditionally, we could basically turn and run. Now, because of these mechanical changes, we're going to have a lot less time to respond. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my two handy dandy F-16s here. You guys are going to help me out a little bit today. Control shift F9. We're going to go ahead and say, uh, let's see here. We're going to switch this over to, uh, da -da 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 -da. nope, ignore plot of course. Thank you. I'm going to press the good old fashioned F1 key and click on the big bird. Click on this guy, F1, big bird. And I'm going to do automatic too. I don't need them to do all this high altitude business. All right. So what they're going to do now is they're going to start rolling down. I can see he's going to find his little SDU at the little big bird. And uh, we just got a new warning, and uh, it looks to be like it's a land roll. It's a Baza radar. Ooh, it's the Baza version. And uh, it's out there somewhere, but I can't quite make it out. What's it doing? What could that Baza radar be doing? If I had to guess, I'd say it's probably trying to get a line of sight on this harm right here. It's coming in. Oh, 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 oh boy, we've got a lock. Now, if you're wondering why we were suddenly able to see this, by the way, it's because we're looking in its direction, and we can actually see it in action. I don't think this guy's going to be able to get the deflection shot. I think his range is a little too short. Oh, actually, see what I want to do. This is, this is called learning, by the way, is I love to run over here and I'd love to find out why I did not take that shot. Oh, the target was too fast. Okay, okay, I'll work with that. I'll work with that. So what we're going to have to do now is we're about to lose our little radar there. So we might as well go turn on his radar, which is considered kind of bad form because, of course, that means now he's exposed to everything else. But whatevs, this is an exercise. And kaboom, goodbye to that radar. All right, F-16s, so you have a new job to do. Apparently, there was a Baza down there. It's a land roll radar. Probably an SA-8. Let's go take a look. All right, here comes my two F-16s. So the guy's sitting there with a the little white wheel, and he's rotating it really, really slowly. The radar operator clicks off the radar real quick. They do some fast little geometry. They're looking through the little camera right now, and they can have little crosshairs locked off. I kid you not, this is a little tiny speck of color inside of the heads-up display. Not that's up the little basically 1970s TV camera that they're looking through right now, locking onto this guy. But um, we do know that it's potentially pretty dangerous. And uh, we'll go ahead and see what happens when we get a little bit closer here. Getting closer, getting closer, and you'll probably say, why is he not firing? Uh, the reason he's not firing, of course, is he has to get into kind of that dynamic range. And uh, everybody knows, of course, the SA-8 has a maximum altitude that it can fire at. So in this particular case, I think our target altitude is 20,000 feet. So somebody was being so tactical, they accidentally blew their own demonstration because they flew at the correct altitude. Oh, there it goes. Ah, that took him no time. So here they come. And uh, we have the two guys. And of course, they're smart. They're going to maneuver immediately. There they go. Here comes the SA-8s. Punch it, punch it, punch it, punch it, punch it, punch it. Go, 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 go. Step on it, step on it. Full afterburner, full afterburner. Go, 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 go. Ooh, that was close. That was, oh, maybe not. Oh, that was close. Oh, oh, that was close. So um, that was very, 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 very close there. Um, or They're actually very fortunate that they have managed to survive that attack. Um, of course, it's not over yet because my F-16 now is going to get close. And notice my SA-8 is just the distributor of missiles here. You, know, you can get one too. Oh, lost another F-16. This is a bad day for F-16 kind. Uh, we've lost a lot of these things today. So that makes me sad. Here, you can have two of these. Get out of my way. Turn around, afterburner. Go, 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 go. Actually, the safest thing to do would be to keep flying straight. <laughs> Turning is actually a mistake. It wastes time. Come on, afterburner, afterburner, afterburner. Go, 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 go. Nope, we're about to lose another F-16. No! Look at how high he is. This missile's like, uh, this is a little weird for me, but okay. Oh, ran out of juice. <laughs> Nicely done. Now, it looks like our strategy is going to work here. Goodbye. 
Yeah, there it is. So as you can see, the new aircraft acceleration is a fun, fun little thing that just makes things a little more realistic. I get the feeling in the future that it's probably going to be modified, that you're going to start probably looking at thrust curves on airplanes and jet engines. And you're going to see this nice moment where high altitude becomes this, like, like I said, kind of the black ice zone as far as performance goes. Enjoy.